What's up guys, Viper FPV here, and today I want to do a real quick video, I wanted to show off the Kakute F7 HDV flight controller. I used to do a lot of these in the past, I haven't done one of these in quite a while, doing a kind of like a flight controller breakdown, kind of show you what the components are, showing you exactly, you know, what the pinout is and why you might want to pick one of these up. So the real big benefit of this one opposed to the original uh, Kakute F7 is that this one's the HDV, which it does have the DJI system in mind. Um, I am planning on building a DJI rig on the channel here. That'll be the first one to do. So I wanted to kind of show off some components that I'm going to be using as well. So that's why we are starting here with the Kakute, Kakute F7 flight controller. So pretty much what you get, you get this nice little hard case. You do get the flight controller itself right here. And then you also do get a special cable in the package just for the HD, the DJI air unit that will connect directly to it, to this plug. I believe it's this one right here on the side, right there. And then you can only have to worry about soldering any wires at all to it. It's pretty much plug and play and it's done, you know? So just wire up your motors. You will probably need to do a PDB with this if you're gonna use separate ESCs. But if you're gonna be using a 401 one ESC, uh, then you can just use the 401 one header, which I probably will be using a 401 one on this flight controller. But let's go ahead and zoom in and kind of talk about what exactly you get with this flight controller besides the uh, DJI header there. All right, so we're zoomed in here on the um, flight controller here and just kind of wanted to go over all the pins and what you get. Now you do get an MPU 6000 gyro, uh, does not do 3232 uh, since Betaflight took that support pretty much away anyway. No one's really doing it much except for Flight 1 and maybe Butterflight or even Emu Flight. Um, but you can power this flight controller with these two pins here, this B plus pin right there, um, from 2S to 6S voltage. And you do, of course, get some 5 volt outputs as well. Um, and then you do have your, you know, you have six UARTs on this flight controller. So uh, you're able to, actually it's not six, it's actually five. Five UARTs on this flight controller. So that should be plenty to power GPS, power um, your receiver, and then power the DJI unit as well. And then you can even put, you know, some other peripherals kind of like a uh, smart audio uh not smart audio i guess it would be like smart port uh telemetry for free sky um maybe some led pads as well but i think there's plenty of uarts on this flight controller to pretty much accommodate anybody uh regarding anything they might want to add on to their quad later down the line uh, then we also do have a boot button right here so it has a dedicated boot button so you can press that down before you plug it in the usb and it'll enter uh, dfu mode so you can flash the firmware on it um, it does have uh, support for a buzzer. It also does have, um, what's it call it? Um, motor outputs of four. And then you also do have an additional two. So you can do a, a pretty much a hexacopter for six motors on a flight controller. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, now, really how it's broken down here on the flight controller itself. Now, the power to the flight controller will be right here, or you can use the uh, 401 header that's right over here. And then this right here is for the DJI air unit to plug right directly in. Then over down here, we do have our LED pads to go ahead and, you know, wire some LEDs if you desire to do that. We have our USB right here. Then right here is our main chip. This is the F7 uh, processor that's powering this. So you should not, if you ever purchased this, you probably would not have to worry about upgrading your quad for at least a year or two. That's that's what I'm thinking. Since I'm using F4 processors still from about two years ago, and they're still kind of relevant to this day, um, it's always kind of good if you're building a new quad to go ahead and go with the newest and greatest so you don't have to worry about upgrading it down the line. Now, if you don't have enough money and you can only afford an F4, then that you know that's fine too. But just remember, you might in two years, Betaflight might not support um, you know the F4 anymore. So just consider that when you're you know especially in late 2019, starting to uh, build the quads and whatnot. But now here on the left side, we have pretty much all our UARTs along with our five volt rail with our five volts and grounds. So I'm not gonna really go into detail. You can pretty much I'll leave a link to the manual down below as well. But I will be leaving a link to this flight controller down below. I'm really excited to use it because I've always wanted to use um, an F7 flight controller before and haven't used one yet. But yeah, so that should do it for the video. It was a real quick one today, uh, but I'll see you guys in a future video. Peace.